Hello, good morning and welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I've got a station behind me, so this video is all about trains and railways again. And this station is called Nong Pla Duk, and it lies on the southern line in Thailand. And it's actually a junction, there's two junctions that come off uh, this line, uh, just down the, the line from here, from this station. And one of them is the uh, Death Railway. This station marks the start of the Burma Railway, which is also known as Death Railway, which was constructed by POWs uh, during the uh, Second World War. And this video is all about the Death Railway. Uh, and what I'll be doing is I'll be following it uh, via motorbike, uh, filming stations like this along the way. Uh, most of the stations all the way to Nam Tok Station uh, are halts, but I'll be videoing uh, the actual stations as we go along in order. So before we get to Kanchanaburi, which is the main town along the Death Railway, there's this station and a few others which I'll film. Plus we'll also see Kanchanaburi station itself and of course the main landmarks on the line which are the bridge over the River Kwai and the, via, um, the wooden trestle viaduct. Um, which is another big uh, landmark as well. Plus, I'll also be taking the train from Kanchanaburi to the end of the line at Namtok. So not only will I be filming the stations in order and the landmarks in order, but I'll also be doing some bits of filming from the uh, train as well, sort of all mixed in there. So anyway, Without further ado, let's take a look around this station because right over my shoulder here, if you can just see it, that's a memorial stone that marks the, uh, the start of the Burma Railway. But first, here's a little bit of history about the line. The 415 kilometre long line originally went to a place called Tanbiu Zayat in Burma where it linked up with a pre-war coastal railway line. It was built between September 1942 and October 1943 in order to link up Bangkok by this station at Nong Pladuk and on to Rangoon in Burma in order for the Japanese to supply their troops in seizing control of Burma from the British. Over 60,000 Allied POWs from countries such as Britain, Australia, the Netherlands and America, and between 180,000 and a quarter of a million Southeast Asian civilians were all subjected to horrific forced labour conditions, whereby around 90,000 civilian and 16,000 POWs died during the railway's construction, lest we forget all of them. The line was completed in just over a year that included over 600 bridges, six to eight of which are long span bridges that includes the famous bridge on the River Kwai, which we'll see later on. The Japanese transported over half a million tonnes of freight over the railway before it fell into Allied hands. After the war, the Thai section of the line was sold to the Thai government for one and a quarter million pounds, which is equivalent to $55 million in today's money. A small section of the line over the border between Burma and Thailand was removed and over time more was ripped up to be used on various rail projects around Thailand to leave a 130 kilometre section between here and Nam Tok station. This section was reopened on the 1st of July 1958 while it was extended further to Nam Tok Sayok Noi station for tourism purposes in 1995. So yeah, this um, station was opened on the 19th of June 1903 as part of the southern line between Tombury Station, which is located in Bangkok on the other side of the Chao Phraya River, and Spetchaburi, which is further down the line. And as I said, I'll put some information up specifically about the POW camp that was here. There's obviously no sign of that now, but it's located in some um, 
I think some sugar cane fields um, just the other side of the road that this station's on. Nompladuk was chosen as the starting point of the Death Railway due to it being the location of a rail yard. Just to the north of the station was a POW camp where initially 600 British soldiers arrived after being captured in Singapore. The camp was gradually enlarged to house over 8,000 POWs. With it being located so close to the rail yard, it was a prime target for Allied bombers and it was hit on the 6th of September 1943 before being closed on the 22nd of February 1945. So this is the uh, the next station along the line, the Death Railway, towards Conchenaberry. And I've uh, just been speaking to the station master, who's 35 years old, and this is his first job for the um, State Railways of Thailand, and he's only been here six months, and he's station master already. There's not exactly much to do here, but um, there he is, just popped out, right on cue. He's doing gardening, watering the plants. That's one of the um, duties that uh, they do here. And it also looks like he's growing some vegetables, some sunflowers. Anyways, there seems to be quite a big industrial area around here. Lots of um, trucks with uh, containers. And you can see here, they load containers onto uh, onto wagons and send them down the line. But I forgot to mention earlier, there's actually 29 stations between where we just were and Nam Tok, all together on the Death Railway at the, you know, currently. But only a handful of those stations are proper stations like this one, with a proper station building um, dual tracking, so they've got a passing loop, and most of them are halts, so they've just got one simple um, structure which provides some shade and shelter. And no doubt, I'll show you one example as we're uh, going along up the line. Okay, so the last proper station before we get into Kanchanaburi is this one called Tarua Noi and it's very reminiscent of the uh, previous one we were at. We'll take a little look around here and see what's what. Okay, so I've moved on and I've now reached Kanchanaburi town and as you can see this is the bridge on the River Kwai and I'm going to tell you a little bit of uh, history about this bridge. The infamous bridge depicted in the 1957 film The Bridge on the River Kwai wasn't actually filmed here but was instead filmed in Sri Lanka. Known as Bridge 277, it was originally a wooden bridge that was finished in February 1943 using a thousand British POWs before another thousand Dutch POWs were added. This original bridge was located about 100 metres downstream from the current bridge, which was built out of steel and concrete and finished in June 1943. Both bridges were bombed and damaged during an air raid by the RAF on the 13th of February 1945. The wooden bridge was hit again by the US Air Force on the 3rd of April before a second RAF air raid finally severely damaged both bridges on the 24th of June. Japanese anti-aircraft positions were located just north of the bridge on the eastern side of the river. After the war, 
the bridge was rebuilt with the missing bomb spans replaced. You can see they're straight topped instead of arch like the other spans and the railway line reopened in 1958. Now, the name of the bridge is a bit inaccurate on two fronts. Firstly, Pierre Boulle, who originally wrote the book that the film was based on, never actually visited the bridge and presumed that it crossed the river Kwai Noi. However, it actually crossed the Meiklong. Another inaccuracy is the pronunciation of the name Kwai in English, when it's actually pronounced Kwai in Thai. So after the film was released, the bridge started to become a tourist destination, but tourists became confused with its name as the river it crossed didn't match. So in the 1960s, the Thai government decided to rename this stretch of river to Kwe Yai. They didn't spell it to match the English pronunciation, as Kwai in Thai actually means buffalo, which is what some Thais call stupid people. Okay, so I'm now at uh, Kanchanaburi Station, uh, waiting for the train to arrive. It's a little bit late, about 15, 20 minutes late. Uh, but I'll be taking it all the way up to Nam Tok Station. Um, I've already filmed quite a few of the stations as well as the main sites, such as the wooden trestle bridge and the bridge over the River Kwai, of course. So what I'll do in the film is for each location that comes in turn, in order, I'll film the station that we pass through, we stop at, as well as the, the main sites along the way in order. So it might be sunshine like today, and then yesterday it was a bit cloudy, so uh, bear that in mind. <laughs> anyway, let's wait for the train. So as you can see, we've got quite a few tourists uh, waiting to board the train as well. So I think all the carriages are third class, but these ones are quite comfortable because they're foam cushion seats instead of hard wooden. And we're just about to leave in a minute.
Okay, so our first proper station outside of uh, Kanchanaburi, as we're heading up the line towards Namtok, is this one called Wang Yen. So these are track inspection. Uh, vehicles on the rail. They don't look like they've moved for quite a few years because there's a whole load of plants growing up the side of them and on top of them. Okay so this is Tarkilen and there used to be a POW camp very close to here which actually got bombed. I'll put some details of the history of this station and the, um, the POW camp on the screen. Okay, so this is Tamkra Sai, or Sai, not too sure how you pronounce it. But this is the little halt station on the western side of the trestle bridge. So this is the western end of the Tam Crasair 
wooden bridge, the trestle bridge, the famous trestle bridge. So it's another landmark along the Death Railway. And what I'll do is I'll tell you about its history as we're walking along. This bridge was built as the railway met with a massive cliff and so it was decided to build a 400 metre long wooden trestle bridge which would follow the cliff along the Kwai Noi River. Construction began in March 1943 with 700 British, 600 Australian and 450 Dutch POWs along with 100 Thai force labourers being assigned here and placed in three work camps. During the first blast with dynamite, part of the cliff collapsed, killing many prisoners. The sheer drop also resulted in many falling to their death. During the wet season, the ground became soggy, causing instability and collapse. However, despite all of this, the bridge was completed in just 17 days. Since its construction, it has been extensively strengthened and repaired which means you can walk along it as long as you're extremely careful and look out for passing trains. Okay, so our next station along the Deaf Railway line is Wang Po. It's a nice little station, this one. And um, apparently there's a train coming in about 10 minutes up the line towards Nam Tok.
Okay, so we've made it all the way to Nam Tok Station. This is it. We've actually got a train parked up here, which we'll take a little look around. But this officially is the end of the line. Um, and Nam Tok, as I said before, means waterfall, but there's no waterfall here. The waterfall is actually another one and a half kilometers further up the line in this direction. And in fact, there's another station, a little halt, which we'll visit. And that's the actual end of the line, but there's only an excursion train uh, at the weekend on a Saturday and Sunday that comes all the way up to that station. It stops here as well. I think it's uh, train number 909. And that goes all the way to the end, to the actual uh, waterfall. So Nam Tok Station was reopened in, uh, I think, June 1958 by the uh, State Railways of Thailand for tourism. And the area here, the, st the original station here, was known as Ta Sao, and then it became Ta So by Europeans when they were uh, building the Death Railway. So here we are at the uh, Nam Tok Sayok Noi, which is the small little halt station that goes beyond Nam Tok. Uh, and today's a Sunday and there's um, an excursion train that comes from Bangkok Pua Lampong station to here. Uh, it's only a, a very small halt. That's the only time at the weekends that a train comes to this uh, little station. Otherwise, all the, all the uh, services stop at the previous station, Nam Tok. Okay, so the first site after where we just come from uh, Nam Tok Station is not this colourful temple. I've never seen a temple in this sort of black current uh, colour before. Really pretty. But behind this temple uh, is the railway line, is the Death Railway. And they've reinstated about 100 metres of line here with the original wooden sleepers to show you what it uh, once looked like. And this site here, I think just further down from this temple, uh, that was the original Tong Chan station. And here they've got a small collection of the uh, the tools and the spikes which they put into the sleepers. So the railway would have come from that direction along here. And you can see here they put some rails down. Right, so this is the uh, interpretive centre for the Hellfire Pass. I'll just show you a little map of what there is to see here. There's quite a bit to see. There's obviously um, things to see inside the centre. And then it's quite a, a drop down to the pass itself. And then you can walk along quite a way visiting all the sites that are listed on the map. Nothing by you to make ever intimidate me because I know you can't make more sense. The only thing I ever do is I want to be a nice person. The only thing I ever do is I want to be a nice person. The only thing I ever do is I want to be a nice person. The only thing I ever do is I want to be a nice person. The only
Okay, so we're just about to go down to the rail bed and the uh, Hellfire Pass itself. There's an interactive um, headset which you can uh, wear as well. But I'm not going to be doing that because I'll be too busy filming. So this is the uh, path going down. There's quite a lot of steps. But they do have electric buggy. So I'm told from my dad actually, who's been here before. And they'll take you down. That's where the start of the trail is, down there. So we're now down onto the rail bed. This is the start of the trail. Yeah. <laughs> 